Okay, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to find the regression equation that best models the given data. Um, before you start coming up with your model, the best thing to do is to look at the scatter plot and see what the overall trend is. Do you see a curve? Do you see a line? Do you see um, several turning points? Um, basically, we want to look at what is the data doing. So for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Desmos.com to help us out. So I'm going to pull up the internet right now, and I have it already on Desmos.com. If you're not familiar with this, this is a free online graphing calculator. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a table. So this is X1 and Y1. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the data, um, 3, 1, 5, 9, and 0 are my X coordinates. I could have also hit tab and it would have gone to the Y coordinates, so I could have put them in simultaneously, but I just find it easier to do it this way. Okay, so we have our data points entered in. We can't see them right now just because of the fact that 321 is off of our screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see my points. Okay, and we can shift this over just a little bit and then we could zoom in maybe a little bit more it went a little bit too far, but so if you look at the overall pattern of this, we can see that it goes up and it comes back down. So I wouldn't use a line for this because of the fact that there is an apparent curve in our graph. OK, so in decimals, what you have to do is you have to um, know what the model looks like. So we know that if we wanted to use a linear model, um, we would type in the y equals, and you can do mx plus b if you wanted to. You can actually pick the variables that you want to do. So I would do y, and if you just put the 1, it'll actually put it as a subscript. And then I'm going to hit shift and the, bu the button above the tab key or right next to the left of the one is a tilde. So I'm going to hit shift and tilde. Okay. And if you wanted to see a line, we could put in the MX plus B. Okay, and I forgot to put my X1. Sorry, that was my fault. I forgot to put a subscript. So with this, you can see that um, on here, our R is negative 0.85, which isn't terrible, um, but because there's not a whole lot of points with this, I want to show you that this would give you, um, your R squared is 0.7362, so only 73.6% of the variability is explained by this model. So let's look at what a regression model looks like now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do AX1. I need to pull up the keyboard. And then I'm going to put squared plus BX1 plus C. Okay, so now if you look at this model, you can see that this one more accurately depicts this. I'm going to go ahead and close the keypad. Um, and you can see that R squared is 0.9963. So with this, 99.63% of the data is explained by this equation, where for the last one with the linear model, only 75%. So um, the quadratic model is definitely a better model for this, especially since you can see a curve. This point is kind of off a little bit, but that's the only point that's not right on the model. So with this, what you would do is you would just write out your model by plugging in all of these values in to A, B, and C. Um, and your R squared, remember this is your variance and it tells you what percentage of the data is explained by the model. So this is a very, very strong variance. So let me just write down the equation so you would know how to put it on paper. Um, I chose to round to four decimal places. So I would have Y is approximately negative 0.3047 X squared plus 1.3966x plus 19.0415. And our R squared, remember this just again tells us what percentage of our um, variability is explained by the data. And this is a very strong number. So if you see something like this, you know it's a very strong model. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.